Good morning everyone, my name is Chris from Two-Headed Wolf Gaming and welcome back to Thrones of Britannia, our East Anglia campaign in Total War Thrones of Britannia. By this point you already know that I've also started an East Anglia campaign in the Crusader Kings 3 series, right? A new game. And that is going pretty well, it's definitely a lot tougher than what we had to do here in Thrones of Britannia, at least Definitely tough for early on. It's now starting to pick al along, like we're starting to expand a little bit through the British Isles, surviving the constant raiding from the Vikings. I guess Crusader Kings 3 having the entire map uh, visible, it's uh, having all the other factions involved, it's getting to be a bit tougher. Let's focus on what. Thrones of Britannia is offering us right now. We finished building a market cross. We finished defensive masters. So at this point, we would be able to upgrade our swordsman, right, and our berserkers to level 3. That's what happened last time. Let's take a look at the armies. We'll leave the king here for this particular character. So he already has some siege towers, we're gonna do this siege battle in a second, let's check the other troops as well. For you, for Sinward we'll move him to Linden. These two characters will stay in place. Godwin, you protect the port. I should upgrade your troops soon, but we only have 200 gold left. I don't think we should really be worrying about that just now. We can't construct anything, we should take a look at research, what we are able to do. We could go ahead and push on better spearmen, though we're not really using them. Master of missiles might be good. We are doing a, a little bit of skirmishing and we want them to survive, at least early skirmishing. Going for medium siege engines, uh, I don't think we'll need it at the moment. Maybe in a future campaign we would focus on siege warfare. Morale of commander armies, military prestige no. Jarl horsemen. I guess at this point we don't really need a whole lot of things. We could go for trade summits, plus 5 enemy campaign movement range, it's going to give them a bonus, but it will provide us with some diplomatic bonus towards other factions and one more point towards your king, giving us a lot more diplomatic bonuses and a lot more income from commerce. You know what, let's go ahead and do that, let's go for trade summits. And can start the battle over here, the siege battle. They have a few tough troops. They say that we are at a disadvantage or we're equal in strength. However, I don't believe that that's the case. I have a beautiful map with the sea in the background. They've got a bunch of spears. The male swordsmen are the toughest. They've got a lot of arrows, however, once we hit the walls, they won't be effective against us any longer. Let's besiege this side with the strong stone walls. Okay, so what are we going to do? We're gonna take these siege weapons, these free siege towers, and we're gonna drop them. And we're going to add swordsmen on them and a bunch of axemen. At this point, we're placing them like this. And one siege weapon on that side. Archers here in front do a tiny bit of skirmishing. I don't know how long they will resist since they, they did have about seven troops, I think. Seven archer troops. For the rest of our units. Let's pick them, put them right behind 
Command us. Good. Let's check the shield biters. I don't think we've looked at them before. But there you have it. With the wool with the wool for bell pelts. They've got bear helmets and some chain mail on them. Okay. Let's scale the walls. Let's get inside this battle. Let's push our victory. Spearman, spearman. There's no archers on the wall, or we can't see them just yet. Exactly, destroy their defenses. They're under missile fire. But I don't see any enemy. Other than the arrow towers. Don't know, maybe they're behind the walls and we can't see them. But I'm gonna start throwing some arrows here. If only to scare them, I guess. Bring some of the soldiers here. And bring some of the soldiers here. The mailed swordsmen are up here on the wall. Let's take a look at them. They've got big shields, which are probably very good against missile fire. Under enemy fire. Archers, yes, we archers are fire. all the way behind, which is, in a sense, better. Like we said that the siege weapons, once they hit the wall, they, like they won't have a chance. But them sitting behind, they'll be able to fire on the walls at us. So maybe this is one of the better tactics. Let's do fast forward just for a second. Now we should target who? Should char target their archers. We've managed to climb these walls. Let's bring two troops up here. We've hit these walls as well, so let's engage on this side as well. Good. For these guys, they are getting attacked by the arrows quite hard. So I'm going to bring, use this pyramid to go after these archers. Our general is under attack. So they're quite, doing quite a good job, actually. This is a good tactic, keeping your archers behind, right, while the enemy scales the wall. If you have enough troops to keep them in place, you might actually do some good damage on them. Um, these unshielded warriors, they've got some damage on them. Let's try to bring them inside of the settlement we can't really do much with our cavalry at the moment unless we dismount them and we do not want to dismount them Arch these spearmen let's go after the archers once more berserkers you come down here and engage his general Archers, you shoot at this. Actually, you shoot at those archers in the back. General and everybody else, you go ahead and engage the rest of the troops. For this Anglian arch axeman, I want you to come inside the settlement. For you to definitely come inside the settlement. We take over the gates. Let's bring our troops here. Bring our cap and the front gates. Maybe we will be able to capture the gate and charge them in. Because their archers are really doing a number of our troops. Spearmen. 
And for some reason, these pyramids got stuck here. Slowly getting up the walls, I guess. It's not easy to climb this ladder. You go down. You come here. So, several spearmen, they're coming here in the front of the gate. Go for them. You come here. Axeman, yes, come down the wall, engage the rest of the troops. S, capture the gates there. King and the rest come inside the settlement. Uh, what else? What else should we do? Now we're we're inside the walls. We're really pushing this advantage. Now I do enjoy, even though the fronts of Britannia battles are not the best from the series at least. I do enjoy this kind of fighting on the battle map. A bit better than, you know, managing the. Managing the armies like in Crusader Kings. Like I understand the focus is not on armies in Crusader Kings, that's not the point of the game, it's more of a role-playing game, right? Because you have certain characters. Ooh, we're really getting decimated over here. We kept our backs turned and we really did a number of, on us with the missiles. Well, that was a mistake on our part. So I enjoy the character building in Crusader Kings, however, I don't know, um, for fighting in the Isles, in the British Isles, somehow, it, it doesn't compare to what these games are, with, with the graphics, with, with the land and everything that you see, like, there's a lot. Ooh. A true monarch leads from the front, with the people's best interests at heart. By your hand and sword, the kingdom has been united, joined at last in common cause. A kingdom that will last for centuries to come. Your deeds have seen this come to pass. All hail the king. All hell the king. Long kingdom victory. We've achieved My one of our primary Jesus. goals. We have finally united our people together into a kingdom that will last for all eternity. We will be remembered as one of the greatest kingdoms have uh, kingdoms ever to have existed, with a legacy rivaling that of all that came before us. Our best generals deemed we remain vigilant, however, as even the mighty Roman Empire succumbed to foreign invasion. Maybe we should strengthen our military presence, just in case. Now our faction is called North Sea Empire. The resolution of this event will be seen in a later turn. And our faction bonuses have been upgraded. So we finally changed our name, not, not in the short Kingdom Victory, as I thought at first. But it's... We are now the North Sea Empire. How cool is that? <laughs> I, I don't know if you're as excited as I am for it, but there you have it. So let's see. Let us see. What do we get out of it? So we've also gained an achievement. Let me check this. King of the English. Playing as East Angler, complete the main campaign by achieving the Long Kingdom victory. So we've gained some new... Um, 
we've gained a new achievement, or I personally gained in my Steam profile, and the North Sea Empire. So we gained 200, another 200% from raiding and sacking. Wow. We could have gone... The, like, maybe in a campaign we will push this mechanic to the max, because we definitely haven't used it to the maximum of its potential. Plus, another plus 6 melee skill for all our units. Plus 2 public order to all regions, plus 2 influence, plus 10 morale to all our armies, plus 50, another 50 reinforcement, and plus 25 income to all. I, I guess some of these are actually the basic. The reinforcement range and melee skill and income from rating, I think these are just the base ones that we start with. And to this, they've added the influence, the public order, and the 25% income to all right so that's what happened over there sorry everyone had a bit of a crash there we are back on the battle map so we've we're now known as the north sea empire we're getting close actually to the ultimate victory we shall see what we're about what's about to happen who's going to invade us or what's what's going to be the situation we're seven settlements away from the long conquest victory man they didn't think that this will be that we would be reaching this as well we're definitely not going to reach the long fame victory we're not going to push for that but we are close to getting the short fame victory mostly because we are already upgrading the abbey the cathedral of saint edmund right we're building a cathedral right here and we are building a cathedral in north trading as well the cathedral of saint cuthbert so we've built, we've managed to push this, no, we were, we clicked on the trade summits next. Let's see, played safe, attacking a weaker target, he gained one command. Skills available, I think this is Berfen, right, yep. He has good loyalty, he's a good quartermaster. Do I want to push for Zeal? Let's add some points in command for him. We'll leave them to replenish. I think that's about it. Like, we don't have any more money. Most of our troops are in place. To sit by and replenish and... Wait to see what's gonna happen and how we're getting to the Long Kingdom victory. I can't believe we're this close. We're this close to actually winning. And this is what well, I think this is episode 30. We've been we've been doing pretty well, all things considered. Let's take a look now. What do we have available? Eric became a carpenter, giving him one point in governance and minus three to construction cost. Liefling is austere. Minus five corruption and public order and influence. Mediator, one governance, so there's quite a few things we could do. Actually, let's check the taxes. Now that we gain that bonus, can we? I don't think we can. We only get two points. Public order. Right, so if we go to the next level. Yeah, so there's one, at least one region that has a minus one. But it does provide us with a, quite a bit of extra gold. Let's see, which one is the region? Yeah, that's how we should do. Let's check which one is the region that provides us with minus one. It's North Mears. What would it take for you to upgrade? Where either, I guess, go for the law field, right? Yeah. <laughs> so with that, we're going to be settled to keeping our taxes this high. Our king, you stay in place. For this warrior, Burfrun, I've upgraded his troops. Let's take out this one stack army. We don't, of course, we don't need to fight them. Let's see what else we could do. There are rebels here, but it's a pretty big stack. You know what? Yeah, let's engage them. We're gonna wait for them to 
attack us, if they're not gonna do it on the next turn, we're gonna do it ourselves. For this stack over here, we're gonna keep advancing. I don't know if they're gonna sit still. They might run. And what is this? Is this a silver mine or something? Pewter Artisan. A tin mine. Without the need for a forge, the smith works the cold metal to produce a variety of useful everyday implements. Plus 30 income commerce or commerce in all regions in the adjacent provinces. That is nice. We haven't repaired this area, but let's do so now. We don't need patrols. We don't need a granary. What we would need is cash, old cash. This will provide us income from industry and commerce, but we're gonna add buildings that provide us bonuses to commerce and industry. Anyone else who needs to do anything? Not right now. We do want to upgrade our soldiers, but let's see where the invaders might be coming from, first of all. Well, CX is running away from us, as they should be. And rebels will attack us? No, they won't attack us. Let's get public order in Berthrun can gain more morale, but I think we're doing well on that. Eoric became inventive, 1 zeal and 10% shield effectiveness from having a tanner in the area. We've demolished these buildings here. Okay, so we could do artisan, giving us some extra income from the mines that we're the tin mine, right, and what else we have here? So we'll have bronze, wood, and tin. This will give us lead. So I guess it will give us just for, from tin, some extra bonuses. But we want that, because we have other industrial buildings as well. We get plus 20 income from commerce, so that's what we are pushing for. Anything else? Anything else? We're ready. If we go for the base income, this will provide us from copper and iron some extra income. We have bronze and bronze is not applicable there. Hmm. I guess at this point I just want to create, we're going to put in place a market cross and a mint and that should be about it. Strike now! We don't really need it, let's attack these rebels, we don't really need the extra income but we're going to get it just because it's nice to upgrade our towns. Or maybe we should start putting, we should stop building new buildings here and put the points where we would actually get some income. Maybe that's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to stop upgrading those buildings and put a few more. Let's see. And put a few more buildings in our base territories. Ooh, we have some upgraded units here. Let's put them in the front line. Let's put these stock troops in the front line. Keep the X-Men behind, some cap on the right side. And our general with the spearmen here. So let's take a look at our Dane Law. So this is the Dane Law swordsman with their male armor and some really nice helmets. Looking at them, it makes me want to go into Battle Brothers and <laughs> look for armors and shield that would make our troops look like this. And here are, Swordsmen. I think, that these ones. Axemen. Yeah, so these are those berserkers. Like, look at this. These guys. They look really nice. And there's this guy with the flog, with the flag. Don't know what his job is, but. Make them 
I guess you are best protected there, right? Because those two, you have those tough troops around you. But I also feel like they wouldn't care about you at all. Scout horsemen, scout horsemen. We're just gonna use our cap to charge them. Actually, let's walk them for a moment. Just so we don't take unnecessary casualties. We'll bring the spearmen through the village. Advance our general. Bring our archers up, but keep them away from battle as much as possible. And some long axemen here. Let's fast forward it. Yeah, there are some scout horsemen over there. We could use these spears to push on them. Now let's engage the cab. And now let's engage their troops. They stood still. That wasn't really a great choice. We're advancing all of our troops. Several spearmen. So true troops of spearmen are going towards our cap. Let's see if we can break them before they reach us. Yes. Run away. Run away. Run away. Just come here. Come on, break, break, break. Run away, run away. We're running away now. We're running away from their spears at least. Let's take a look over here. As they charge in. Here they come. Our general is under attack. Axman. Yeah, let's engage. They've gotten a good charge on us. Let's engage their horsemen there. And they've gotten through to. Ah, that was not a good thing to do. We've lost their. Two of their caps are now with us, are now on us. We're really going to lose the archer for, archers from being overconfident. Hey, what can you do? So let's advance on them. We need to correct some of the mistakes we've made. Yep, we only have one unit of archers left. Hopefully they've not taken them out completely. Let's attack, let's push. I feel that this army created more troubles for us just because I didn't pay attention than anything else. And I think you would agree with me when I do say when I say so. Because otherwise, this army wouldn't have presented would have presented no problem. Anyway, let's end the battle. Apparently, we did lose. We probably lost this archer unit. Like I see, no more unit in. No more men left in this band, in this group. We've taken over... What? Yes, indeed. Exactly. So that's... He has deceased. We've taken over the bronze... Enemy blood mines. Blood. Let's bring back an archer. With we'll you... Oh, I guess I'm gonna keep marching you forward. 
Take over the team line. And we can get even more bonuses here. At this point, we're all getting 1700 gold from the province, but we're losing from corruption. Let's upgrade this team mine to get 30% in all regions in adjacent provinces. So this is just local, but then you go to adjacent as well. It's a bit extra cash, even though we don't need it. Then again, let's pick a research. What do we want to push forward next? Oh, we got uh, this extra 50% from doing the trade summits. And uh, now I want... I want to go for the archers. Yeah, I feel the archers might be the best choice right now. They're helping us a little bit in battle and we want to keep having that advantage. With this being said, this is all the time we have for this episode. We're close, we're very very close to finishing this first campaign of ours, this first game inside the Two-Headed Wolf gaming channel. So I thank you very much for sticking by and I look forward to seeing you all in the next episode. Have a wonderful day everyone.